Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is your boy, Derek Gordon, AKA D G mask on my guy right next to me. The one and only openly gay WWE wrestler, Darren Young. Superstar, <laughs> veteran. I, I told you boy, you call me Darren Young. You could be dealing with some legal issues. You gotta go by my government name. Mr. No Days Off, Fred Rosser. Right. But whether you Google me, Darren Young, <laughs> Fred Rosser pops up, Fred Rosser, Darren Young. So you just do you, but we got to take care of some business today. Yes, we do, oh my God. Yes. Oh my God. As you can see from the title of the video, uh, just some things that need to be discussed. Not more discussed, just talked about, you know, our experiences, because as you guys all know, we date outside our race um and we've also been through some things as well that we would like to share with you all so but before we get into all of that darren i want you to tell about yourself tell them you know where you grew up what made you get into wrestling what made you decide to come out all those good fun things if people don't already know yeah. who you are mr no days off well if they Ross. don't know they're about <laughs> to find out who mr no days off is you yes know? sir yes sir uh, I've always wanted to be a WWE superstar since I came out of my mom's womb, 1983. All right. And uh, I followed my dreams laser-like focus right out of high school and college. It was uh, something that I said in my high school yearbook. The last sentence was, WWF, here I come. That's when they were World Wrestling Federation. Now they're World Wrestling Entertainment. So um, I started training in 2002 mm -hmm. and 2009. I got my big break. So from 2002 to 2009, I was doing the minor leagues, you know. Right. Um, how I talk, I'll try to relate it to basketball. It's it's all the same, you know what right. I mean? So I did the minor leagues. I wrestled in, in arenas with no shower, no toilet. Um, I don't I, know, but that's crazy. Yeah, but yeah, I cut my teeth, you know. <laughs> I was working in front of 20 people, 30 people. So still to this day, I... I say to fans all around the world when I perform, I grab the mic, whether it's in front of 100 people or 10,000 people. This still is so much fun for me. 17 plus years right. and counting, still doing this. So um, in 2009, I like it. I like it. yeah, 2009, I got signed out of 75 guys and girls from all over the world. I beat them out. And at the time, I had to pay to do a tryout. This was my How last. How much was the trial? Trial was $2,000. Oh. My own money. And my plan. Yeah, they, they, they wanted serious <laughs> people. Yeah. Right, right. No, it makes sense. People. Makes sense. And, and it was my last resort because I had the door shut in my face so many times. From 2002 to 2009, uh, I did 30, probably close to 40 tryouts with WWE. And I got the door shut in my face so many times until that one yes. May 4th, 2009, 75 guys and girls from all over the world. I beat them out and I earned my contract. So... Uh, I didn't know any of this about you. Yeah, you know, well, man, hey. You learn something new every day. I mean. You're damn right. <laughs> you know, this is a tag team effort. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yes, you know sir. what I mean? So I'm here to support you. You're here to support me. And I always say don't die with a story and you tell it. So uh, when I got signed, I was at the top. I was at the top. You're in NBA, you know? Right. You're at the top of your career, man. But mm -hmm. like uh, you're battling something internally. Right. You're not comfortable with yourself. You have to cut promos like this. You have to cut interviews like this to sound more masculine. That's what I was doing. Right. I was hiding. <laughs> I was hiding the fact that I was closeted. You know. Right. And I tell people all the time there are, are so many reasons why I came out publicly, but the one main reason was because I wanted to simply be able to bring my partner. I, you know, I hate using the word partner. Uh, boyfriend. You know, I wanted right. to be able to bring my boyfriend but backstage. I don't like partner. I just, partner is like my tag team partner, Titus O'Neil, oh, you know, right, that's right, like, right. you know, my boyfriend, <laughs> you know, my girlfriend, you know, like girlfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend, you know, I wanted right. to, to be able to ultimately bring him backstage into the masculine world of professional wrestling, and I wanted to be able to bring him onto a red carpet and be proud, and I did that. And I sacrificed a lot, bro. Glad I said, words. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I, I, I was able, to, I was able to do that, and that's where I met you. I, yeah. I was actually injured. I had tore my. That was probably like over five years ago, yeah, man. That was you a were, lot of fun that night. Yeah, a lot of fun. You were baby. <laughs> you were baby. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was still growing up. Yeah, yeah. I was still growing up. 
I had just tore my ACL, MCL, so major surgery. I was all messed up, and that's where I met you and we stayed in contact. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I wanted to be able to bring Nikki backstage and also on red carpets to see what it's like, you know, mm -hmm. living, living, you know, uh, WWE rock star life, and that's what mm -hmm. it was. And you know what? In the relationship, there were. There were times when we first got together, me, me and Nikki, you know, I know he's probably had people in his ear say, mm, girl, he's on the road 280 days a year. Oh, he's messing around. He's doing this. He's doing mm -hmm. that. Never in my life have I even thought about messing with anyone. I was with him almost five years. Mm -hmm. And like, I never even thought about that. So I said, oh, these people are in your ear uh, saying stuff like that. Well, come on the road with me. It's you, you get off the airplane. You go to the hotel, you check in, you go to the gym, gym to the arena, arena, 300 mile drive to the next city. So you, right. it's like, go, go, go. Right. And you that's know, crazy. it's none of my business. There are people that do that and that's fine. But when I found love in Miami, Florida, you know, I was happy. I that's was right. happy. You know what I mean? That's, right. that's, that's right. what it's all that's about, right. man. That's so right. I, I can keep going, but this is your show. You know, this I is mean, your it's show, all about, I mean, <laughs> I just, I mean, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, I just got off a flight from San Antonio, Texas, whooping up on people, <laughs> whooping up on people, and we we made it a point to uh, do this. You know That's what I mean? Right. And at uh -huh. first, you were second guessing yourself, bro. And I yeah, and I yeah, answered yeah, my yeah. phone. I said, "Man, don't die with the story, and you tell it. Right. Tell it. You know, right. explain yourself because your story, okay. our story, is going to help someone, man." Yeah, I got proof right. of my DMs. It goes down in the DMs, right? It does go down. You know, DMs. for me, it goes <laughs> it goes down in the DMs with, with people that I've met, fans that I've right. met, and they talk about wanting to commit suicide. And then that's when yeah. I'm, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychiatrist, but I have to like, you know, send them messages, video messages, talking them out of it, being a friend to them. Same you know, here. Same here. it's a crazy thing. You know, it, yeah. it's a crazy thing. So not all superheroes wear costumes. Like that whole, uh, set, like you that, know, you know like what I mean. That. Yes, sir. Yeah, and that's what we are. And that's what yeah. that. And none of us are strong as all of us, man. So we gotta support one another. That's why I'm here. Right. Well, yeah. As you know, um, well, you guys know my story already. Uh, first openly gay college basketball player to come out publicly back in 2014, and you date. And and correct me. If I'm wrong, yeah, Asians, yeah, right. you know, only Asians, yeah. Um, personal preference, Asians, personal you know, preference. and that's because yeah. Nikki, I was with him almost five years, right, and we had great, uh, great chemistry, great everything, and we're still friends to this day, right. I always use uh, if The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, can still work with his ex-wife, who's his manager, if they can still work together. Then why can't m me and Nikki still be friends? And we're still friends. We separated. He's doing his thing in the UK with fashion school. I'm doing. I'm doing my thing here, whooping up on people. But <laughs> you know, he still helps me with you know, right. speaking engagements. He right. still helps me with talking points because I always say I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. So I need help. You know, when it comes to talking about transgender issues, you know, I right. I don't know. I don't know because I'm I'm not transgender, so to be able to kind of voice my opinion about it, I want to be educated on it, you know. So mm -hmm. he helps me with that. He helps me with fashion. He helps me accessorize. You know, oh, this is for you. You got to represent. Block the hate, baby. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I, I, I yeah, didn't come I here. It, I, I didn't come it. here empty-handed. Appreciate block, it, and I got man. blocked eight pins. You know what I mean? Thank you. You know, you, you got to represent. It. You know what I mean? Ah, thank you. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I lost my train of thought, but yeah, with, with Nikki, you know, he still helps me, you know, fashion, you know, uh -huh. speaking engagements, you know, and when we were together, you know, the biggest arguments that we would get into is like me pushing him to like, at the time he was fine dining, you know, restaurants, and uh -huh. he wasn't happy, but he could sing, he could dance, you know, he put on slides, he could have been a personal trainer. So I did right. everything and anything. We would get into arguments like, oh, you want a personal train? I'd get the certification. Uh, you know, all that stuff at the end right. of the day was his uh, hobby. You know, it wasn't mm -hmm. his passion. Passion was, uh, uh, pa uh, his passion was his passion. 
So that's when we ultimately separated. He went back home. He raised the funds that he needed to raise to go back to school. And now he's doing great, you know? So that's the, that's the kind of arguments that we would get into, you know? And when it comes to relationships, uh, you know, patience is very, uh, you gotta have patience with me. And when I talk about patience, I'm not talking about patience. So you just went based off, I'm sorry for cutting you off, but you just went yeah. based off of, like what do you go based off of, for instance, like you said, you, you date only Asians. So like what, like, as I'm sure a lot of people want to know this, like yeah. what only made you like specifically go? And of course we're going to talk about me yeah. as well, but what made you only like date Asians? Like why not whites? Why not blacks and what? Mexicans? Whatever it may be, you know, blue, yellow, white. Like why specifically only Asians? Well, the thing is I love it all. <laughs> I love it all, honestly. Mm -hmm. But with Nikki, I, I came out because of him, you know? Right. Before then, I had dated anyone. So he was like my first Asian experience, Filipino and Puerto Rican. Right. So uh, I just had great energy with him. I had great, uh, you know, like I said, patience, meaning not patience in a relationship, like, oh, I need time to think about this, babe. I need, I'm talking about patience, like if I'm having trouble figuring something out. Just right. kind of help me out. Like, again, I have to go back to, I'm not the sharpest knife in the draw, but he was very patient with me. Um, uh, he taught me a lot of things. He taught me if there's issues, if we have an issue, I'm a Scorpio, I keep things bottled in until I explode. Right. He taught me <clears throat> to um, uh, just talk about it. You'll feel so much better. And that's right. what we would do. So these learning experiences just... Just I just gravitated towards the culture, you know, mm -hmm. because it is a cultural thing, you yeah. know, they are very, right. uh, yeah. you know, again, all cultures have bad apples, you know, it is what it is, but mm -hmm. my personal preference has been Filipino, Asian culture, and it is what right. it is, that's what I like, and like, I cheer for people that have, you know, same-sex couples that are uh, mix, mix, mixed races. I, I cheer for people like that. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. I mean, the, it's how it's supposed to be, especially part of our community. Yeah, that's how it's supposed, supposed to support one another. Exactly. And so. this episode is gonna. Yeah, we gotta defend ourselves, man, because our backs. We're public figures. Our backs get against the wall. So if no one else is gonna uh, help us share our story, we're gonna share our story yeah. on your YouTube channel. I'm gonna share it on. On mine, you know what I mean? And we're gonna explain ourselves and we're gonna just, oh, you know? No, I heard nobody. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a teddy bear. I'm a teddy bear. No, I know, I know, I know. You know, you know, the champs are teddy bear. The block, the eight champs are teddy bear, baby. Don't forget, I didn't leave. I, I didn't come here yeah, empty handed. That's crazy. But, yeah, you keep like going. It. I'll keep playing like the shot. Yeah, she's. <laughs> it's Someone okay, wants baby. attention. It's um, okay. Bella's beautiful. But. Yeah, so. All right, my side. Uh, <laughs> moment of truth here, yeah. cause it, it, like like you know, it's not just us two. Um, Jason Collins' mm -hmm. boyfriend is white. Michael Sam, who he dated, his boyfriend at the time was white. Uh, my good friend Wade Davis, mm -hmm. who was a formal formal NFL player, his boyfriend is white. And uh, Bobby Porter, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's he's married. Oh, Billy Porter. Billy. Right? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Billy Porter, yeah. uh, who you know I look up to a lot. Sure. Uh, he's married to a white guy, mm -hmm. and people always. I remember a video came out. So when I first came out, I went to the Glad Awards. That's where I met you. And when I went on the red carpet, um, this was a guy who we were just dating at the time. We went on the red carpet and took pictures, and we ended up kissing. This was my first time on the red carpet, mm -hmm. but. That kiss wasn't supposed to happen. This is how new I was to the red carpet. It was like we turned and looked at each other and he was leaning in, but I just went forward type of thing. So when that snapshot got taken, like people was just going crazy. Like, oh my gosh, like why? Every time these black guys come out, you know, they always end up with something, always end up with someone white. And how it started for me, cause there's, there's not, like, it's not a specific reason or people try to say the whole daddy issues, this and that, because for one, I have a father. It has nothing to do with that, so I'm not sure where they get that from or whatever it may be, but I remember it like it was yesterday. I was in high school, and there's three people 
I, I'm an actor, but I have to say this because there's three actors who, you know, still admire and, you know, um, look up to to this day, but also find them, you know, very hot. Mm -hmm. uh, first one was Daniel Craig. And the reason why Daniel Craig was because when I saw him on the James Bond movie, in the James Bond movies, him, Hugh Jackman doing the Wolverine stuff and uh, Robert Downey Jr. When I saw Lowe's three, it's just the whole mature masculine look. Mm -hmm. Like physically, like looking at them, like that's what drew me to them, like that kind of look. So it wasn't like, like by all means, I can look at someone who's black and say, oh my gosh, like he's handsome, but sexually he doesn't do anything for me. Like, wow. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's, that's yes. what it's more about, yes. like. Daniel Craig, Robert Downey Jr., yes. and Jackman, those are the people like they're they do something sexually, physically for me. Like so it's okay. Like so that, that's that's you're, specifically you're me out here. Yeah, yeah I'm like listening. That's, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah. So that as far as cause people always ask me like why? Like <laughs> and, and that's the best answer that I can give. Literally I remember Can they ask, are you happy? You know? Yes, that is no I'm here's 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 another thing. This is not to put the black community down in any way because not everyone is like that but don't get me wrong there are a few people out there who you know don't like it which is fine i mean you're entitled to your own opinion of course i just you know want you to be able to respect the situation and and support me and love me for no matter who i'm with yes. you know but i was in when i was at seton hall when i finished up at seton hall i um <laughs> There was a, you know, there's a questionnaire, like a fun questionnaire that you get when people, they ask you questions that you got to answer as far as like, who would you go to dinner with and stuff like that. And literally, it was Dan Craig, <laughs> you tell me, bro, who would you go on a date with? Dumb three. Um, so it's weird that I'm bringing them up because they're all actors as well. But um, you know who lately jumped into that boat? Uh, Luke Evans. Oh goodness! <laughs> wow. Luke Evans jumped into that picture. Um, yeah, so well, I mean, just to throw, not to get off topic, but yeah, yeah. He, he got added into that into that uh, boat as well. But yeah, for me, honestly, it's just more. It's just the whole like when I say white older, it's not just people in their fifties, people in their forties. I mean, I've been with people who are in their mid to late thirties. You know what I mean? But it's just more. Just I said, it's the whole. Like, if you, if you Google Darren Craig, Hugh Jackman, Robert Downey, like, that whole mature look, yes. that's what does it for me. Like I said, it has nothing to do with skin color or anything like that, is it? Like, and people take it that way, and it's like, that's not, that's not it. But I feel like, because no one has done this video yes. talking about stuff like this, so I felt, honestly, this was the perfect time to do a video like this, just so people can understand exactly the situation and what's going on and not take it to the point like oh my gosh what's wrong with black people yes there's nothing wrong with black people yes. i'm black i love yes. my people yes. you know what i mean so it's, yes. it has nothing to do with that yes. whatsoever so but what's the uh what's the craziest reaction you've gotten from uh, from someone feeling some type of way basically if you have one well, anytime I would bring Nikki to any kind of uh, event, you know, I would tell him like, you know, Nikki, just uh, I know how to take care of myself. Like, people are gonna try to uh, be fresh to me and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Just, just be cool, you know, because you know he's got some Puerto Rican in him. So right. it was actually probably <laughs> at in Miami at the red carpet. Uh, it was an event I had seen you at a second time. What event was that? Well, oh, was it uh, Pride, M Miami Pride? I did a red yeah, carpet. Yeah, I did a red carpet. Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah. So I did a red yeah. carpet there. Something and, happened there. Yeah. yeah right. And and some uh, I had a WWE rep there at the time, and he was kind of uncomfortable. Like you know, I said I got this. Everything's good. Like I'm just gonna do the red carpet real quick, and then like just like I'm I'm, I'm gonna leave. You know. So right. like I had the WWE guy rep leave uh, because he was uncomfortable. So uh, this one guy. Came, came up to me and was just like being very aggressive, very aggressive, like touching me and stuff like that. And then eventually, uh, Nikki was like, excuse me, do you, and he's very sassy. He's like, excuse me, do you have a problem? And then Nikki's explained that we're a couple and the guy's like, whoa, 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 I didn't uh, mean to cross the line. And he was like, I'll be right here when you do, honey. 
So he's very quick with his words. Right, so right, like, right. and I didn't say anything because he had had enough. You know, the guy was doing too much. He was being extra. So that was a moment when I was like, you know, he he had to say something. But t typically, I can handle myself. Right. He had enough, and and he was right. He was right. But more moreover, social media. I think social yeah, media. Yeah, that's what it always is. Like, you know the. You know, it's always that. Like I remember, I used to get like crazy stuff. Like people used to say, like I'm sure you've had. You know, I'm sure most of us have all experienced like when people slide into your DMs, like you get all type how. of type of pictures yeah. they send to you, and yeah. you know some of the stuff they say, and it's just like. If you really look at it, it's like, for one, it's very hurtful because it's like, wow, like you really go to that extent as far as like saying A, B, C, and D, like yeah. rather than supporting me for who yeah, I am and what yeah. I love. I mean, you already support me for what I did by coming out, but you can't support me for, and this is not everyone. Yes. And I'm not just talking about black people. Mm -hmm. I mean, white, white guys who are younger, because you have to understand, like I'm very... Like, you know, you have some people who like a little bit of everything. Yeah. I'm very specific. Me too. So it's just, it's, really, <laughs> <laughs> it's just one lane. Yeah. Like, so it's yeah. like, yeah. I don't know. It, it, it's kind of crazy, but like, yeah, people always, yeah, like, what's, what's so good about white guys and this and that? And it's just like, it, it got to the point that it's like, I stopped explaining myself. And this is why I wanted to do this video, yeah. just so people can understand and know that it has nothing to do with our people yes. at the end of the day it's just something it's just that's what we like like i like older white guys he likes asians so it's, it's has nothing to do with that but at the end of the day you know i've been out for uh, six years now um i don't get it as much mm. as i used to but you still have people yeah saying this and that um saying all type of crazy things but it, it is what it is you know as long as we're happy yeah. if you look at it from a standpoint as long as he, as long as he's happy, then that's all that should matter. You know what I mean? Exactly. So it's like, exactly. Yeah, but I don't. I mean, I didn't. Just like I said, I don't look at me making this video. It's gonna affect my acting career or anything no. like that. Whatever it may be, it's just me honestly being blunt and honest. And that's why I wanted to bring you on because, like, we're in similar situations. Sure. You know. So. Yeah. Like, I mean, seriously, like. <clears throat> I made it a point to come here because once you share your story and get this off your chest and me too get this off my chest, we'll feel so much better. Right. You know, I made a sacrifice. I made a sacrifice by coming out, by being the first uh, openly gay WWE superstar to uh, inspire others to be and accept themselves. You know what I right. mean? I made a huge sacrifice. I sacrificed my career mm -hmm. so others can be themselves. And by being the first, I've encouraged other athletes to... Uh, that they have a duty to um, to instill confidence in our youth and to lead by example. So I'm not the first and I'm not the last, but we need more. Definitely not the last. Yeah, we it's need, gonna be more of us yeah, sooner or later. Sooner or later, we need more representation. Yeah. You know, but like I said, on top of the wrestling I do, I'm speaking to schools. I'm speaking at universities. Uh, November 23rd, I'm speaking at university back home in uh, Jersey. And okay. like, you know, these opportunities for me to share my story, that's what it's all about. Where are you man. speaking at in Jersey? Uh, Centenary University. Okay. So it's, uh, I think, a small university, and I'm going to be wrestling there the next day. So it's like a fundraiser type deal. So again, this is still fun for me. And like, for it's me, for me, my story is even more unique because my mom is gay too. So I did not know that. Yeah, so you definitely did never told me. How yeah. long have we been knowing each other and you ain't never told Yeah, me. because we always see each other, it's like kinda quick, man. Right. This is, like this is the first time we're kinda sitting down, we're always on the go. But right. yeah, she came out to me when I was That's seven. Awesome. That's awesome. She came out to me when I was seven. I didn't come out to her until I was twenty eight. So back in the eighties the science wasn't as strong as it is today. Oh. Same sex couples. Different. Yeah, yeah, same sex couples now. couldn't have kids really, you know? So uh, no one wants to let the mom down. So right. when your mom's like, oh, I can't wait to have grandchildren and all that stuff. So I just suppress those feelings. Right. So when my mom comes to these speaking engagements, she's um, she's my tag team partner. Like I said, literally, because after I'm done speaking, parents will go up to her and be like, man, how do I handle my son or daughter being gay? 
there are many re- ways you can handle it, but you gotta just simply love them. Mm-hmm. Love them yeah. unconditionally, bro. Yeah. And I was very thankful for my parents to be that way. Yeah. Dad, I'm not putting you on blast. Um, but my mom, she was like, she started crying, and then I started crying, and yeah. you know, she was like, I'm not crying because I'm upset. I'm crying because I'm I'm glad you finally told me. Mm. Um, you know, of course, my father took him some time, but. It's totally different now, like how it is. They're very supportive. It's not even an issue. And yes. it amazes me that, you know, we're in this day and age, how people, I don't know, can like disown their child, but that's a whole nother well, topic. But what's is, worse? What's worse, accepting that your son or daughter's gay or accepting the fact that you have to bury them? You know what I mean? Like what's, yeah. I mean, what's worse? Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you want to yeah. bury them or you want to just accept them? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you better go ahead with that. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, in, in our society, we all know things still has to change, you know, but I think with people like us, you know, um, and the upcoming generation, um, you know, we have to, you know, continue to keep fighting the fight. Yes. You know, and just, you know, time by time, day by day, um, piece by piece, you know, we'll start to change this world. Yeah. Slowly by slowly. And we're doing it with this episode. Yeah, definitely. So I know, and if you guys want to follow my guy, no days off, Fred Rosser. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's Without that's your Jim. Twitter, right? Twitter. Yeah, yeah. It's that's not, not your Instagram, though, right? Instagram, Twitter, real Fred Rosser, my government name. So there's no lawsuits, <laughs> baby. Okay. <laughs> but I'm gonna also leave his uh, his social media down in the link in the in the description, and my social media will be down there as well. But you know, I really appreciate you guys for stopping by. This was a very very important video that you know I felt like that we had to make. And I'm glad we made. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys, you know, can take our feedback from this and better understand us now moving forward as far as, you know, why we like what we like. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> and don't hate, appreciate, okay? <laughs> Block the hate, salute the greats. Yes, sir. I like it. This is your boy, the one and only, Derek Gordon, a.k.a. D.G. Thank you guys for stopping by. Always remember, stay blessed, stay humble. Keep your head above water. Appreciate it, my guy. I like that.